So, so what are some uh, considerations people need to take into account when using K-Box? So I think a lot of people have a tendency to just hop on the K-Box, hook it up, and then just start doing reps. And a lot of the time, what you'll see is people will not actually achieve the goal that they're trying to achieve. Um, instead, they will not have any centric overload and they'd be better off just doing mass-based loading or something different. So if you're using the K-Box, you need to ask yourself, well, why am I using this? Okay, well, you're trying to get an eccentric overload. Well, what is an eccentric overload? That means that you need a peak eccentric force and a peak eccentric power that is higher than you are capable of producing during a concentric movement. So you could potentially do this, for example, if you stepped off of a box and you stopped yourself, uh, like you did a depth drop or something like that, you could, you could get those sorts of overloads probably. Um, you could produce more force eccentrically than you could produce concentrically. So that's the first consideration. If you're just doing reps on the K-Box, not maximally, um, you're probably not getting any sort of actual eccentric overload. You might have produced in a set more force eccentrically than you produced concentrically, but you might not actually have a true eccentric overload where the peak RFD, eccentric RFD, and peak forces eccentrically are higher than your concentric output. So that's the first consideration that you need to make. The other th consideration is that you're dealing with the momentum of the wheel, you're, you're generating momentum in the wheel, and then you're trying to stop that momentum. So if you generate a lot of momentum over a full range of motion, okay, you say I have this much energy, and then you stop it you know, in the same amount of time, you're not gonna have any eccentric overload. It's just not gonna happen. However, if you accelerate the wheel to the top, and this is one of the major considerations that a lot of people don't make, if you stand up really hard and you accelerate the wheel the whole time as you stand up, and then you stop it in the top third, and you just stopped it right there, you would have an eccentric overload because you accelerated it over this period of time, and then you stopped it over this period of time. So. You're, you're probably gonna have an eccentric overload. However, you're not gonna be able to do multiple reps. So that's maybe one issue with that. Uh, how you would combat that is you would do a full rep and then you would stop it in the bottom two thirds. Now, how you get an eccentric overload is uh, you're, you're stopping it in the bottom two thirds. So you're stopping the wheel faster than you accelerated it because you're doing it over shorter distance. Um, but you also have the benefit of being in a weaker position. So you're, you're very strong at the top of your rep, but as your knees and hips move away uh, from your body, you're gonna be in a weaker position and you're also potentially going to overload just because you're mechanically in a weaker position, stopping all of that energy or all of that momentum that you generated on the way up. So that's another way uh, that you could do it. It's the two thirds method, I think is traditionally what it's called. Round two. <laughs> Go ahead and ask All the right. question. All right, so, uh, oh, I, I don't think I have it on auto stabilize. Oh, is that it's right? definitely on it. It's you definitely sure? on it, 100%. Yep. You're right. Well, nope. No, it is. You're good.